uh, uh, he, he was a bridge builder there. So over to you, Peter. Okay. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks, Alex. Okay, um, so um, I will try to be as punchy and entertaining so that you don't wish you were upstairs listening to the wonderful voices. My voice isn't as good as that now. Um, Peter Blackman from Southwood and Ferrers in Essex, and at the back is Yuri the dog uh, and my wife Geraldine, not necessarily in that order. <laughs> um, so, previous experience. Um, Funnily enough, I mean, I mean, first of all, thanks so much. Because if somebody can get the screen to work, that would be brilliant. Um, um, thanks so much for being, for putting on the the production that we enjoyed before lunch. That was amazing. It was spectacular. It was awe-inspiring. It was moving. It was just wonderful. And for me, it was perfect. You used the resources at your disposal to their best. And that's what we're all for. Find, know your audience and then communicate with them. Funnily enough, and the reason I say this, in 1972, I, I, I was involved in writing my first ever passion play and that was in a Pugin chapel. Um, there are too many ex Catholic seminarians around. I'm afraid I was one. Um, it was St Edmunds at Ware. Nothing like as big as this, but rood screen, etc. We wrote it for the place. Um, I then met my wife, and two years later, I was no longer a seminarian. I was a married man with a wife, and we were collaborating and writing a play, and we've written a number of things since. Um, I describe myself as National, the National Youth Theatre audition failed. <laughs> um, and then had other sort of dramatic sort of experiences. Um, I was director of the church's media council for five years. I was the religious advisor on the Manchester Passion, which some of you will remember was the most spectacular production the BBC has ever put on and technically the most demanding. You had music coming from a mile apart, having to be coordinated. And there was a thing, the vast majority of the crew and the, the people who were in it were not Christian. And I can assure you, the after-show get-together, everyone had been touched by it. So, it, it does. Um, I was then with the voice of the listener reviewer. I mention this because Alan Bookbinder was the head of BBC Religion and Ethics. He's now the head of the Sainsbury Family Trusts, of which Jerusalem Trust is one. Hence, the connection. But also, you've already heard people talking about the importance of the BBC, particularly local BBC, in what you are doing, in helping to get it coverage, etc. I'm wearing a badge that says, Save Our BBC. Next week, I shall be na launching a national campaign to save our BBC. Its charter is up for renewal, its licence fee are up for renewal. Local broadcasting has been hit, and it could be absolutely decimated if we don't get the right answers. So I, I ask you, please support the BBC. You need them. It's going to be a help in promoting and getting funding. OK, so Jerusalem Trust. Um, <laughs> all the details on the website. Um, I've been doing the South and Ferrers play. Uh, we did it in 2009. And this is, this is a DVD um, of, of snippets from our last production last year, 2014. I've always managed to get £1,000 for each of those productions from Jerusalem Trust towards that. And I said, um, no, as some of you know, I've been coming to this conference for a few years. Uh, and I said, well, you know, if we can get £1,000 from the Jerusalem Trust per year to help seed corn a new play, wouldn't that be wonderful? And it's the sort of thing the Passion Trust's here for. And um, I made an appointment and then I had a dreadful gastric bug. And, and, and I didn't take it with me, so I let Alex go on his own. Uh, and Alex sat down with a lady called Bridget Cass, and in 20 minutes he came out with the offer of £10,000 a year for two years. And I went, wow, <laughs> fantastic job. I'll, 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 I'll create the network and the contacts. You go and, you go and do the talking, please, Alex. So, so we got this fantastic, and I, I, I hope you agree that this is something that really fits with the Passion Trust. So I'm, I'm, I'm passionate and very pleased about it. Um, we've decided to set up, they, they've asked us to administer it, and we are. So um, we're inviting applications up to £5,000 uh, for new. It has to be new. The whole point of this is to encourage seed corn new plays. 
okay? Um, or completely revamped ones, ones that have collapsed and need to be regenerated. Um, and uh, yes, so that's that, good. So um, everything's on the website. Uh, so you must be new or substantially revised performance of an earlier play, perhaps a resurrection. <laughs> Uh, you need to have ecumenical and community involvement, but we will look at exceptions. All you need to do is submit two pages of A4. We don't, you, if, you, if you send in more than two sides of A4, we won't look at it. Um, at least it's two. There are an awful lot of places where you have to be doing one. Um, and the first uh, limit, uh, the first deadline is the 8th of February, uh, and you also have to commit to telling us what happened afterwards. Now, I'm going to use, quite quickly, um, two case studies for this um, in the quarter of an hour I have remaining. Uh, one Life, One Passion is the play in Southwood and Ferrers, and then there's also Hornchurch. Uh, Hornchurch and Leicester were the ones that I was aware of from a long time, uh, for having been going a long time. Leicester was annual. Hornchurch has been going since the early 1990s on a five-yearly cycle. They put on theirs, uh, next to the Queen's Theatre in Hornchurch, there's a huge green. They set up all the staging around it. The audience is in the middle and you move around. They do it at night, three performances, Good Friday, Easter Saturday and uh, Easter Sunday. And they get 6,000 people between those three performances. It, I'd describe it as relatively trad. Jesus arrives on a donkey. Um, and and um, you, it, some people are in modern dress, but Jesus and, and, and the apostles, etc., they are dressed to 2,000 years ago. Um, it's more the um, people like Pilate might look like Hitler and that sort of thing. Um, it, it, it's that way round. Obviously, they've got the lighting to produce, so that you've got to have lighting, make up the whole shooting match for that one. 45,000. One life, one passion. Southland and Ferris is a new tab. Incidentally, that was my last guide dog, and just seen there, that was Blind Bartimaeus, Bishop John Raw. I will speak to you in a minute about Bishop John Raw. Here he is. He's just about to be... Roma doesn't have a clue what's going on. <laughs> um, and that's Jesus. Um, so we're all modern dress. It's a, it's a town that's only been built 20 years. Very much the same size that Jerusalem was 2,000 years ago. Everybody going to Asda, etc. We use two squares, move between them, and as you'll see in a bit, we use natural features like a bandstand and the steps of Barclays Bank of Gethsemane. And so you've got Jesus' great uh, monologue um, whilst people are trying to get their cash out of the Barclays machine. All good stuff. <laughs> so um, those are the two, oh, and ours, we did one performance in 2009 on Good Friday um, instead of the March of Witness. Don't have a March of Witness and a Passion Play on the same morning, no. <laughs> These are far more effective. The Marches of Witness, certainly our way, have gone downhill, I'm afraid. Um, <coughs> and this, it, it, it was a bit of a... It wasn't, it wasn't satisfactory from the point of view of the people putting it on, and there were some people who couldn't get there because they had church commitments. This time we did two performances. There's no point in doing it in the middle of Southwood and Ferris on Easter Sunday, because it's, the one, it's one of the two Sundays in the year that Asda can't open, and so there's nobody there. <laughs> so we just do two, much more satisfactory. So we have our dress rehearsal on Maundy Thursday night, before it gets dark, and then on uh, Good Friday and Easter Saturday morning, 11 till 12.30. Takes about three, uh, an hour and a half. And our budget, £9,000 got us through one uh, performance in 2009, 14000 we did the whole shooting match for in this last year. The vast majority of that going on, on audio and staging and security, because we rig and it stays until we de-rig. Um, best story, an hour before the 2009 performance, the fish and chicken delivery van pulled down the wiring and we were all going bananas that we weren't gonna be able to hear a thing. Um, I, I have to say, I have been to a, a, a new play, a new passion play, where the production was fantastic, the acting was brilliant, the costumes were phenomenal, the staging was brilliant, but you couldn't hear because the audio was rubbish. 
don't bother. They lost half their audience within the first 15 minutes. So you've got to get your priorities right. We don't, we, we don't spend a lot on costumes. We don't need any lighting. We don't need any makeup. Um, and, and hopefully you can get the gist of it. This is the main square, and that's the bandstand, and Barclays Bank's over there, and you do everything in, and you push everybody out of the way, and you've got stewards to do it. 2009, we weren't quite as ready for the numbers that turned up, and we, had, we, we, we only hit one person with the crossbar of the cross on the way round, but fortunately the bunch of flowers afterwards put that right. <clears throat> Anyway, right, so two pages. What are you going to play? Well, you're going to tell us what, what the play is, what its name is, make a case for it, tell us why it's a good idea to do it there, and who's going to be, in, who's going to be involved in organising it. Then the performance details. All of this is on the website, but you may not have seen it. So what's the vision? Uh, what approach? S traditional, standard? How does this fit your place? Um, what's your expected audience? I mean, OK, first time, you're not going to know the numbers, but you know, wh who do you expect them to be made up of? Number of performances, dress rehearsal details, prop staging, costumes. In our case, all minimalists, as you can see. Um, that's Jesus there. Cash machines just behind the port. We made, our, we made our Roman costumes, by the way. Our producer did that. Oh, sorry, I, I wasn't the producer, by the way, um, Alex. I'm just the director of writer and promoter and fundraiser. <laughs> <laughs> the producer, <laughs> producer is part of somebody else. Um, audio, lighting if necessary, health and safety. You'll see in a minute a brilliant crucifixion. We are very fortunate we have access to a national health and safety leading expert who produced the shooting at the Olympics, the Paralympics, who works for the Secret Services, etc. He's a can-do, not a can't-do. We've got a good crucifixion. It's not the same, but if you want to borrow ours between years, you're very welcome to it. It's on a hinge, it goes up, it comes down, and it won't fall off because it's got somewhere to stand on, uh, and it's quite realistic. OK, so stewarding. Yes, that was something we certainly learned from the first time. We thought we were all right, but... Um, accessibility. So we particularly advertised our Saturday performance as being accessible. So we had we had uh, uh, we had signing, uh, which can be very expensive. But we were fortunate to get some church-related people who come and do it just for the expenses. Um, but you can spend an awful lot on that. Audio description for people who are blind. Um, uh, wheelchair access. Stewards around who were going to help people for seating for frail that sort of stuff. So. Um, I'd suggest you try and do that for, if you're having more than one, try and, if you can do it for all of them, great. Here we go, there he is, up he goes. And as I was saying earlier, at the dress rehearsal, one of the children underneath um, started crying and one of the mothers comforted her and she turned around and said, I'm acting. <laughs> <coughs> uh, we had a female Caiaphas, they won't let me have a female Jesus yet, but one day... Uh, that, that always bring, that, that is quite tearful. He then comes down and goes on a, an undertaker's uh, trolley. And we get him back in via road to Emmaus. To work. We walk back from this square to another square, and we've written in that. Scripts available. Um, Hornchurch gave us our script. We amended it. We've got, um, people were talking about using children. We've actually got a narrator... And we've got two choruses. So we've got a Jerusalem 2000 year ago chorus and we've got a Southwood and Ferris Town Today chorus who are just going to go to Asda shopping and tomorrow they're going watching the football and what's this Good Friday thing all about. And they ask the questions, so that's how we do it. Um, he, oh, we're known as the biker's passion. Do you know why? Why, why? Do, would Jesus arrive on a donkey today? No. Harley Davidson, loudest, loudest bike in Essex. So uh, that, that's where we go. OK, um, I think that's all you need to cover. Yep. Oh, no, sorry. Um, children and, and vulnerable persons safeguarding DBS. You need somebody who's going to do that. What are you going to do about refreshments? What about outreach? Um, we always invite people back for tea and coffee and, and, and cock cross buns afterwards. Um, this year, um, uh, one of the churches, we've only got five churches in South Wales, and we do it all through the churches together uh, uh, in, in the town. Uh, and one of the churches put on a gazebo for people who wanted to go and talk to people. But we let people come to them. We don't go and accost people. Um, one source of funding, you do have buckets at the end. It's free. 
Um, we don't have any roads to close. We've got all the necessary permissions from the authorities to use what we, what we, where we are. Um, the police know all about it, etc., etc. Um, we do have a bucket collection at the end. We do have a programme. Some people won't. We again try not to finish off with applause, um, but some people want to. Some people want to give. Um, in fact, we get over a thousand pounds from the bucket collection. In fact, we've got fifteen hundred pounds in the bank towards next time as we had after the first one, which gets us started. Um, other likely funds. Now, we're very fortunate. Essex church leaders were very supportive. We got £4,000 from the Essex church leaders this last time, which was huge. Now, Bishop John Raw um, was the new Bishop of Bradwell, and he got involved and wanted... He was, he was going to be doing a visitation to the Anglican parish. Um, I think I've got five minutes. That's right, that's right, it's okay. Whenever Lindsay moves, I get worried. Anyway, I'll go back over here. <laughs> um, so, um, is there a type of question and answer? That'll have to come after tea. Okay. <laughs> oh, come on. Come on, you cut me down. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, right, um, yes, Bishop of, Bishop of Bradwell. Very popular man, one of the three suffragan bishops in the Chelmsford Diocese, wanted to be in it, took the part, fantastic. It was very much, that play was very much part of the town's experience of worship of Holy Week last year and afterwards he and I had the vision that we want to try to have a passion play in Essex every year so this year we got Horn Church last year got South Woodham and we want to try and have another one so perhaps in Harlow or Buzzland each year unfortunately John Raw very quickly after that um, um, sustained uh, a very nasty aggressive cancer. He was booked to come, but unfortunately he's in treatment at the moment. He would make a very good patron for the Passion Trust, um, so long as he makes it, because quite honestly he may not. Um, so I do ask you for your prayers for Bishop John Raw and his family, um, who have been inspirational. Um, in trying to pull things forward. And that also talks about, so we need prayer support, so we have prayer support groups um, and, and breakfast meetings, which are half prayer, half fun, an organisation. And then you need to cover your governance. So who are the organisation? Who's the sponsoring organisation? Um, you, can, you can get your charity money through individual denominations. So you can gift aid by giving the money to the Catholics or the Anglicans or whatever, and then they pass it on to churches together in wherever you are. Um, because that church is together in whether, wherever you are probably won't be a registered charity and won't be able to get your gift aid. Um, who's going to have legal responsibility? You do need insurance. Most church insurances will cover public events and that's how we get ours. The only two things they won't insure for us are the crucifixion and the Harley Davidson. Fair enough, Jesus knew he was quite happy. Um, because it was all practised and safe. Um, the rest of it was absolutely covered and we had full public liability. So, and who are the key personnel? The script writers, directors, producers, etc. So where's the expertise that's going to get this going? Feel free to apply if it's just an idea. Say for argument's sake you wanted two and a half thousand. We might say to you, right, we'll give you a thousand to start with to enable you to do your feasibility studies, come back to us and show us later that it's going to happen and we'll give you the other 1,500. That's what, you know, we want to help seed corn new plays to happen. Um, so there are, there are examples of a successful application and report on the website for guidance with bits redacted, but I'll give you a clue, they're the ones from us. <laughs> um, so my final remarks are, we're very, I think you'll find everybody here who has their different experiences is more than happy to help anyone else. We're all happy to share our scripts. Uh, I'm happy to come and travel and sit down with you and work as a consultant and it won't cost you more than my travel and a bed for the night. Um, I really don't. And that to a certain extent was why I wanted that. I saw that £1,000 that my vision for the start was to enable someone to get started. And you've got the name of Jerusalem Trust behind you, which means you can go to other people and say, and we've got the support of the Passion Trust and the Jerusalem Trust. And, you know, we're official, we're on the map, we know what we're doing, and that in itself will get you. Our way of getting money, I'm not a great one for jumble sales and coffee mornings. I find out who are the key people in each congregation who've got the money and, and, and target them. So I targeted individuals and I get most of my money that way. But obviously, I've got it through Jerusalem Trust, 
churches together, the individual denominations of some of the churches that are involved, and, and, then, and then some wealthy individuals. Now, I'm a young town of, 3, 000, of 30 years. If you're in a place that's an established market town, you're going to have some late local people who've got a bit of money. And hopefully, and you can do it for about, you know, you can do it for 15,000 quid, which is not a huge amount. What I would say, it takes you best part of 15 months to do. So if you're thinking about it now, I'd be doing it in 2016. Get all your production stuff sorted out by the summer, and then you can promote your event on BBC Local Essex or whatever. Get them to follow you through. We were very nearly on the one show in 2009, and then Giles Brandreth went off and did a story about chocolate bunnies somewhere else. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> um, but we've had coverage from the Times, haven't we, about them all in the past? And I don't think she's here today, is she? But uh, and we, we've had a lot of good publicity. So then have your big meeting where you try to publicise everything in the, in the autumn. Um, auditions in, 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 towards the end of November. Cast at the beginning of December. Get them all to learn their lines over Christmas. <clears throat> and then start rehearsing. We rehearse, do all our rehearsals on a Sunday afternoon because it's commuter land and you can't get other people. I'm, I'm, I am stopping, honestly. Um, it, you, it's got to be to professional standards, as Alan Bookbinder and I agreed from the beginning, whether it, whatever sort of media it is, television, stage or whatever, it's got to be as good as anything. You don't get on just because it's religion. Okay? Make it good, good luck, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Oh, by the way, that, that's, what, that's what a final script looks like. Thank you.